Hey everyone, it is great to see you all again. Are your photos missing that wow factor or pop that you see all of the pros have in their pictures? Or are the color palettes that you use in your photos bland, unbalanced, or just unwelcoming? Well, in today's video, we are going to go over arguably the most powerful and most feared photo editing tool, the tone curve. I'll explain exactly what this is, how to use it, and then also I'll go through a couple of mistakes that I see a lot of photographers make when using the tone curve. And then stick around to the end where I show you how I took this photo from this to this. I hope you all enjoy. My name is Jalen Oban. I'm a landscape photographer and educator based in the Pacific Northwest. I create weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you with me on location to give you a behind the scenes look at what I do. If you enjoy the content, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and subscribe. Before we dive into how to use this tool, let's talk about what the tone curve is and then a few variations of it that you're able to use. The tone curve is a powerful tool when it comes to photo editing that allows you to manipulate the brightness and contrast of the colors and tones in your image. They give you total control over the tonality of your image from the brightest whites to the darkest blacks. Unlike sliders that adjust exposure, contrast, or brightness uniformly, tone curves allow for more nuanced control, enabling you to make precise adjustments on specific tonal ranges. Now you may notice that when looking for the tone curve section in Lightroom that alongside the normal gray tone curve, you also have the red, green, and blue tone curves. We'll get to those a little bit later. But for now, let's focus on the normal gray tone curve. The basic tone curve is a graph where the horizontal axis represents the input or the original tones of the image, and the vertical axis represents the output or adjusted tone curve. The tone curve is typically represented by a diagonal line running from the bottom left representing the shadows to the top right representing the highlights. To brighten an image, you can drag the middle of the tone curve upwards, and to darken, you can drag it downwards. More importantly, you're able to use these anchor points to adjust your exposure and contrast a lot more advancedly. Creating an S-curve, as I'm sure you've heard about, increases contrast by brightening the highlights and darkening the shadows. Conversely, an inverted S-curve reduces the contrast. However, beyond the basics, as mentioned before, you're able to use these anchor points to adjust the contrast and exposure to your liking. You're able to add contrast to specific tonal ranges while keeping the other parts of your image unaffected. You may want to darken only the shadows while keeping the highlights as they are. This can be achieved by adding what are called control points to the curve and adjusting them selectively. These control points essentially act as anchors. This allows you to precisely adjust the tonal range you want. This can also be used when the overall brightness and contrast of an image are fine, but the midtones need adjustment. By carefully placing points on the curve, you can raise or lower just the midtones without affecting the extremes of the highlights or the shadows. This is a great way to bring a little oomph to the midtones of your image. Keep in mind that some editing softwares offer tone curve presets that allows you to see how the image is affected by certain tone curves. These can be a great starting point if you don't know where to begin. However, I would always recommend playing around with it yourself to see how it affects your photo. But how about those RGB curves that we talked about earlier? Well, these red, green, and blue tone curves allows you to adjust the tonal range of each color channel individually, enabling you to make adjustments to the shadows, midtones, and highlights of a specific color channel. This is a great way to blend colors together when you're color grading your image. Let's first look at the red tone curve. To increase the red in your photo, pulling the red curve up will add red to the image in the selected tonal range, shadows, midtones, or highlights. When pulling the red curve down, this will reduce the red, adding cyan to your image. The same goes for the other two tone curves. Pulling the green curve up will add green to the selected tonal range, while pulling the green curve down will reduce green, adding magenta. Pulling the blue curve up will add blue, and pulling it down will add yellow. Now there are a few ways that you're able to use this to your advantage. Take the blue tone curve for example. Say your image has an unwanted blue tint, especially in the shadows. You can reduce the blue in the shadow areas by pulling down the blue tone curve in the lower left section. This will add yellow to the shadows, neutralizing the blue cast. This can also be great for enhancing sunsets where usually the entire hue of the scene is a warmer color. Sometimes a scene can also be too warm or too cold. By adjusting the blue curve, either adding blue or reducing it, you can fine tune the color balance without affecting the overall exposure. This could give you a less uniform and more specific way to adjust your white balance. A popular cinematic color grading technique involves adding blue to the shadows and yellow to the highlights. You can achieve this by lifting the lower part of the blue tone curve, adding blue to the shadows, and pull down the upper part, adding yellow to the highlights, and fine tune as needed. This creates a visually appealing look when you have cool shadows and warm highlights. 
Or maybe you just want a cooler or moody atmosphere to your photo, like in a winter or a shadowed scene. You can raise the blue tone curve across the tonal range to infuse more blue into your image, like this for example. You're also able to simply use the tone curves for creative effects, such as adding a cool tint to a specific part of your image. You can create interesting color effects by adjusting the RGB tone curves separately. For instance, you might want to increase the red and decrease the blue in the shadows to create a warm shadow effect while keeping the highlights cooler. Some more advanced photo editing softwares also offers a luminance tone curve which allows you to adjust the brightness and contrast without adjusting the saturation of certain colors. This curve is particularly useful when you're trying to adjust the brightness and contrast but you don't want to adjust the color balance. Keep in mind that for all of the tone curves, small adjustments can make a big impact on your photo. Try avoid making extreme changes unless you're going for a specific artistic effect. For more precise control, try using multiple points on a curve to target specific tonal ranges. Experimenting with presets can help you learn how different tone curve adjustments affect your image. The tone curve is one of the most versatile and powerful editing tools that we have at our fingertips. Mastering it allows you to make both subtle and dramatic changes to your images, from correcting exposure and color balance to creating unique looks. Understanding how to use the basic tone curve and RGB tone curves will give you a deeper level of control over your photos, helping you achieve your creative vision. Take this scene for example. Before using the tone curves, the scene doesn't really have a specific color palette and the colors don't really match. We can fix this by adding certain colors to certain tonal ranges of the scene and boom, a nice well-balanced image. But I hope you all learned something from this week's video. If you didn't already know, I started a Discord server for the entire community to come together, share photos and give feedback, and then at the end of every month, I'll be selecting one of your photos to feature in the Discord as a monthly contest winner. Other than that, if you could subscribe to my weekly newsletter for weekly updates, and then for vlog, blog, and other video updates, if you could like and follow my Facebook page. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.